let's stop at my usual spot here to see if everything's all right with the trailer man everything is so freaking dusty so dusty seldom seen it so bad look at the rims how much dust is on there <laughs> Good day to you. If you're new here, this channel is all about my 1968 Glendale Voyager. I'm fixing it all up to take it camping in the northern wilderness in Quebec, Canada. You should tag along for the guaranteed bumpy ride. It's going to be fun and beautiful. We are turning here to go to our usual spot and it's been cleared by the logging company so maybe they're logging around here. Let's first see what's going on before I'm stuck with the trailer in there. All right they're just using it as a gravel pit. I don't think you can see anything it's way too dark but um uh, yeah, there you go. They're using it as a gravel pit, just digging for sand, probably to fix the main road. But we have a bit of a pickle because I really needed to come this week before bear hunting season. But this is what the road, the smaller road to the lakes look like. Yep, I'm not gonna risk it. I guess I could camp here, but don't feel like having some tractor waking me up in the middle of the night. Um, let's see, let's see. I just parked the trailer, came in, and then had the unpleasant realization none of my windows apparently seal at all. Here's the road dust all over the counter and here's road dust all over the cushions and all over my mattress. That's what I'm supposed to sleep on tonight. That one single window can shut properly. <sighs> it was so dusty on the road today. Man, you know, I was looking forward to just opening a beer, relaxing. I guess that's part of camping. With an old vintage trailer. That's camping with an old vintage trailer. It's going to be fun, they said. Yes. Can you hear this? This is a flock of Canada geese. They're probably landing on the lake right now. Probably gonna spend the night on the lake. Good morning campers. It's about six in the morning. This is our predicament. We slept overnight in that little uh, corner there beside the gravel pit. Um, that's as far as I can back up the trailer before hitting snow. Um, I tucked it out of the way so if the, if the road crew wants to pick up gravel, I'm not in their way. Let's check out the lake and see in daylight, if perhaps we can force our way. It froze last night, so snow is really hard to pack. Like, I don't even sink one tiny bit.
I could definitely drive here. Not too much water. It's over there that there's a lot of snow. This is where I usually camp. There's still ice on the lake. That's how we're gonna do it. I shoveled a little bit over there to remove the ice chunks. Backed up the Jeep as far as I could get. I'm gonna have a snowy doorstep, but at least it's not gonna be a water bath, mud pit. Um, and then we're still not too far from the lake and we are out of the way for the road crew if they ever wanna access the sand pit. I think we're good for the week over here. And just for the fun of it, notice how much snow there is here. There's about three feet deep here. And all the way to the lake, there's three, three and a half feet deep on that side. That's the shadow side, the sun side. So the trailer is on the sun side. Um, and just notice how much snow there is. And five days from now, I'll take another shot at that and you'll see. That's going to melt like an ice cream cone on your counter for an hour. All right, let's get everything set up. I have to level this thing because it's like burp, like this. I just quickly counted about 40 Canada goose, Canada geese. There's more than one. Ooh, there's a shitload over there too. Oh, they saw me. Pretty sure all that ice is going to be melted by tomorrow. It's so warm right now. It's so beautiful. Take a look at this. A beaver chopped down tree. About six inch. A few logs here. That's actually fairly surprising because we are I don't know, a hundred yard upslope from the the lake. Oh, I think it's oops, I think it's actually this tree. Well, looks like the beaver screwed up because he didn't get to the branches. But what's surprising also is like, look how wet it is. That looks like sap. This tree is trying to grow, but there's no tree. It's like when someone gets amputated, they still feel the, the limb. Gorgeous day today. Ooh.
Ah. Isn't it great when you have the whole beach to yourself? That, my friend, is beach life. <laughs> I think in English he called these a partridge. They're basically like the equivalent to a chicken. Fairly stupid. Doesn't fly very much. Maybe it's like about to go. Not even the day and the lake has all melted away. And look, we got here. Some beaver wood <sighs> during winter, beavers store wood pieces of wood and twigs to eat the bark, so all will all winter long they eat the bark of their stash of wood and twigs, and in springtime, they all come floating away when the ice melts. You probably don't see it because it's all wet, but there's tiny little bite marks all over it. And there's usually... Yuck. There's usually tons of them floating around, like there's another one right here. All chewed up. It's lunchtime. I asked for the best table in the house. This is what I got. I don't know if you can see, but right there, there's like a amount of earth. I believe that would be the Beaver Lodge. It's a bit far away. We are a bit upslope from the dam and here is the source of Beaver's food cache. Worth noticing that I find interesting is that it's been chewed up at about three feet from the ground. Here there's one more, one more, there's like six, six, seven here, chopped down by beaver. All at about three and a half feet from the ground. I'm not sure what that is. Interesting, right? Remember when I parked uh, the trailer four days ago? I said I'll have a nice snowy doorstep. Well, that's kind of a fail because now I have a mud pit doorstep. So um, I'm tired of the mud. I still have a couple of days out here. We're gonna pull the trailer out and I'm gonna see if I can push through the snow over there with the Jeep. There's about, I think two, maybe two and a half feet left. It melted a good uh, foot, foot and a half in the last, uh, four days so I'm pretty confident the, the Jeep can go through it no problem it's just I'm not sure if I can actually pull the trailer behind the Jeep so we'll probably do it first with the Jeep once clear the trail and then come back and hook up the trailer and try to push through with the trailer we'll see we'll see Not quite two feet, maybe like 20 inches. I'm surprised it went in a lot smoother than I expected. Keep in mind that the snow is really soft right now because it's been super hot. The first day we got here, it was hard packed. Uh, 
not ice, but really solid. I could walk on top, remember? But still, <laughs> the trailer leveled the whole thing off, like snow plowed the whole thing. Anyway, we're good now. We're gonna park in the sun here near the lake. It's gonna be beautiful. These weak croaking sound you hear, those are actually frogs in that little pond over here. They're still frozen, so they're having a hard time. It's the first time I hear them today. Just wait till tomorrow or the day after. It's going to be hard to hear yourself think. That's like, like an hour later. There's still one or two that are like gargling. But it's coming. <laughs> they always stop when I get close. Now that the frogs are quiet and Mr. Woodpecker is gone somewhere else, it's probably the perfect time to do a little debriefing on what went right and what went wrong with this trip uh, so we can improve and uh, organize our to-do list on what to fix on the trailer. Obviously, the major big fail is the window. I know the windows are cracked, I have to change them, but I didn't realize that none of the little squeegees were closing. Well, I sort of knew, but I didn't realize that was creating a lot of dust inside the trailer. There was always like, a, like an old closet smell in the trailer, but I just assume it's an old trailer. Now I think I realize it's just road dust. It's really dusty all the time. And a good reason is the windows. What I'm gonna do is hopefully uh, well, get new glass, obviously. Hopefully you get new squeegees. I think I know a place online I can find them. If you have a good spot for cheap, uh, let me know. That I can order online, obviously, because I'm in Canada. And then I could change all of that. But I also, I think I'm going to um, keep the plexiglass that I have for winter time to, you know, insulate, double them up. I think I'm going to put some wing nuts and just... Put them on and easily remove them when I get to destination in summertime. So I have a dust control measure that's actually sealed for real. Um, and also, I need to do screens. I think I have one window that has a screen. Uh, it was really, really hot this week. So I opened them up, but I have to close them all at like 6 when the mosquitoes come out. Sealed window screen and a uh, plexiglass that I can easily remove and put on when I do like dusty roads like I'm doing right now. The other thing that I think I'm going to do, which would be very nice, is to carry a tiny squeegee just this wide. So when I get to destination, I can quickly wash all the windows because, as you can tell, they're absolutely disgusting, but also because what's the point of having a pristine nature if you can't even see through your windows because they're all freaking dirty? It's dirty because I'm driving on gravel road. Of course, if you travel on regular roads, you probably don't get that. But I feel a squeegee, it would take like five minutes. I would go around and uh, 
it would be all nice and clean. Regarding the dust and controlling the dust in the trailer, I would also like to create some sort of a shield to go over those uh, fridge grill because, well, hey, if I drive and it's pouring rain, it's it's all going to come, you know, in, I don't know why they put the grill in the front. I mean, it would probably be as effective on the side. A quick cover that I could, you know, jam on and off, maybe with some wing nuts, like just put them on or some quick release system to have something I can slap on and remove to uh, get everything dry and dust free in there as well. For inside, the major thing I think I want to tackle next is water management. And one of the things I thought about is to have, of course, a clean water tank for my drinkable water, but to have an, another water tank that is empty and I get a um, 12 volt pump, water pump to fill it with lake water, maybe a little filtration system, because doing dishes takes a lot of water. As uh, for my personal uh, usage, drinking water, I need one gallon per day. I'm here for seven days. That's like seven gallon. Gets pretty heavy. That's just for drinking. So now if you include the dish uh, water plus the water you use to like wash yourself and stuff and perhaps, you know, washing the counter and it's like, that's a lot of water for one week. Uh, it's not like I have a tap out here that I can just hook it up, but... If I have a little pump and a filtration system, I can fill up my, let's call it gray water. Lake water over here is probably fairly good quality. The only thing you gotta know about these little lake up north is that there's a lot of wood debris falling in them. So there's a lot of organic matter. And often enough, that organic matter decompose at the bottom of the lake without any oxygen. And therefore it creates, um, it creates a, mercury i believe it's lead or mercury i think it's mercury so it's it would be better to have a filter um if you use it just to bathe in it's fine if washing dishes would be fine but cooking and drinking probably not so much of a good idea i think that's about it for the next project i want to tackle of course there's a million of things every time i look at something i'm like e, i have to fix that e, i have to fix that i would also like just for ease of, like peace of mind, just maybe paint the floor just so it doesn't look like crap like that. But, you know, when you have leaky windows, you start by the windows. Really, these frogs sound like they're drowning. You know, you know, I still haven't... Get out of the way, you. You know... I still haven't come up with a name for the trailer. I keep calling it the trailer or call it Voyageur, which is the name of the model. Um, but I was just drinking beer here slowly and I was thinking, I, think, <laughs> I find it hilarious. I think I should call it puffball. You know, like these little mushroom. Yeah, like it's round, it's white. And then when you squeeze it, it all goes up in, <laughs> it all goes up in smoke or dust or whatever is inside of these walls. <laughs> I don't know. But I think this is hilarious. What do you think I should be calling it? Let's find a good name for it. Keep going, buddy. You're gonna get it. <laughs> it's really having a hard time. This is amazing. We got the beaver and the beaver slap. Beavers 
as a warning signal, slap their flat tail in the water to warn the other in the lake. Surprisingly, it's not going away. It was doing circles. It almost appears like he's keeping a close watch for his buddy. It's a patrol. It's the neighborhood watch. He's keeping an eye on me to protect his buddy. This is amazing. My battery's gonna run out. He's literally doing circles, just keeping an eye on, keeping an eye on me. The sun is so strong, I don't think we're going to see anything out of this. It's been like a good 15 minutes. 
and it's still doing circles, keeping an eye on me, watching me. This is the st strangest thing. I don't know if you can see it. The, count, the sun is too strong for the phone, but the second beaver is there. And the first one, the little guy, is here. The one beaver is there. And the other beaver is still checking me out over here. Patrolling. They're coming together. Where are they? They're together right now. The two beavers. This is so beautiful. Wow, this is so amazing. I got here like five days ago. There was snow on the ground, ice on the lake, goose on the ice on the lake. And now like four or five days later, there's butterflies. I see beavers swimming in the lake. There's all kinds of birds. And of course, mosquitoes and frogs in, in like literally four or five days. Summer is short. You got to speed through it. I'm charging my phone at the truck right now. Hopefully, the beavers aren't going away. This is so awesome. So this has got to be the funniest thing so far. I was sitting here filming the sunset, thinking too bad the beaver's not here anymore. And then I sneezed pretty loudly. And the beaver jumped out of the bush into the water and went right in front of the sunset. This is the funniest thing. I wish I had it on camera. You're not going to believe me. Anyway, I got my beaver sunset shot for the end of the movie. <laughs>